You right there, YouTube? It is Krakoon again, bringing you another gameplay. Oh, commentary, man. Y'all know how it is. We're still playing on the Annihilation DLC. Beastifying, of course. We're going to be using the Gold Spectre. Uh, rapid Fire. I was going to say Silence then. I don't know why. But uh, this is kind of my new go-to SMG currently at the moment. Originally, not too long ago, I think it was the Mac. Then it's pr I've pretty much gone to this now, and it, as you see from that kill right there, you see the thing puts in down like it's fucking nothing. It goes through, goes through bread like I don't even know what it's. It goes through a knife like butter or some shit like that. But pretty much, man, it's a rape machine. This gun, and especially with rapid fire, it's also pretty good silence than that. But I don't know why I've always overlooked it when uh, we're without rapid fire. I don't think I've really ever used it too much with rapid fire and. I don't know why, it's interesting, it's got really good accuracy, but you can also tell that it's got like a little black grip at the front of the gun, constantly, so I don't know whether or not that makes a difference or anything like that, but there's definitely a grip at the front, so it's a pretty pretty accurate SMG and is pretty beastifying really, and I've got like a pretty, this is a pretty Beastifying Scar, obviously, putting them down, you know how it is. I think I'm running UAV, Blackbird, Chopper Gunner, so it's not all non-lethal, so I'm not emphasising upon the rushing as much, but still I'm emphasising about how much of a beast this gun is. And seeing as though it's a pretty long commentary going down today and everything like that, I'm uh, going to dive right into a topic with you, and I've been saying I was going to do a commentary about this a long, long time ago, but... Generally, man, what I'm going to say to you today is I'm going to put down the facts and generally everything about justifying a rage quit. And generally, I'm just going to have a little discussion about rage quitting. And the fact is, yeah, I'm a big believer that if you join into a game late, then uh, obviously you're fighting a battle that isn't yours. And in that particular case, I would justify rage quitting as feasible or whatever like that i don't even know if feasible is a word but i can justify rage quitting if it gets put into that situation if you start a game if you start at the beginning of the game and you're in the pre-game lobby and then you uh and then you rage quit after that due to the amount of enemy people on the enemy team either camping or playing in a particular playstyle, or using cheap weapons like that, I can justify a rage quit, because I shouldn't have to put up, or I shouldn't have to fight against their particular playstyle, if I want to be rushing, well, well I am rushing most of the time, but I shouldn't have to put up with that playstyle, if I don't want to fucking do it, you know what I mean? It's just a waste of time, and that's kind of hence the reason why I can uh, justify a rage quit oh, I'm not saying a rage quit all the time I can justify a rage quit out of the rare occasions that I do actually rage quit and I don't really know really it's uh, it's always been part of the game and they wouldn't have the option there in the menu in the game to leave the game if they didn't think people would want to do it or they didn't think it would be necessary they wouldn't put it there if it wasn't necessary though as a fucking knife fail on that guy that's pretty bad but uh yeah yes that's what i'm saying but i'm like on the counterpart of that as well obviously when people rage quit and then obviously when you join into a game it's not your fight so then i can justify a rage quit from that obviously there is a good part of that about how if people have already rage quit the game and you get left in a 6v1, then uh, it's obviously good because then people can join back into the lobby. But the fact is, they shouldn't have rage quit in the first place, even if they're getting raped on. So I don't know what they need to do. They need to, like, stop it from, like, like having the option to be able to rage quit unless you turn off your Xbox or something along the lines of that. But I don't know. I was thinking about how to eradicate it and... I thought the only way to eradicate it is, is like a couple of options in fact, so it's not the only way. There's a couple of options. I see it as in, you either, what's the word now? You either fucking, gee, I can't, I'm getting my words on mixed up here. You either make a playlist so that you can't get the option to be able to rage quit, 
i.e. you can't, the dashboard is locked, surely they can be able to do that, so they lock the dashboard in like, just like a, a ranked kind of game, you know what I mean, and then also don't give them the option to be able to rage quit, and I know, this isn't just going for Call of Duty, it goes for all online multiplayer games, because all online multiplayer games offer the capability to leave, because they think it's practical that they can have the capability to leave if they need to go somewhere or they need to go away from their Xbox or something like that. That's obviously capable, but I don't understand why they've got to include that when they could quite easily, if they needed to do something important and leave the game, they just turn off their Xbox, don't they? They don't fucking, oh, I'm going to have to leave the game and go wait in this lobby. No, you don't. They just fucking, it's an excuse for people to just keep on rage quitting. So, I mean, I think they should make a lobby where it eradicates all... Uh, possibilities of being able to rage quit in like some kind of ranked playlist and the only way to rage quit is if you were uh, is if you like turn your Xbox off completely and then even then you should still be able to get a penalty ie by losing all your losing all your cod points or something like that or and the vice versa of that when there was originally black ops was originally being marketed and everything like that and then they did the trailer about the wager matches and people talking about ooh, I just got a fucking email. Did a did uh, did marketing about wager matches and everything like that. And I originally thought that wager matches were gonna be in a in like online multiplayer like re, matchmaking, right? So I originally thought it was gonna be that, and I thought that was already gonna be the absolute main reason for people to not rage quit the game because if they put like cod points on a ranked game then like the amount of cod points from the enemy team if they lost would get added up and then put onto the uh winning would get split between the winning team if you understand what i mean like that and that, that's what i originally thought was going to happen with this wager matches but they decided to put it in an own separate thing like an own separate matchmaking list but i i just thought it was stupid because wager matches don't really I'm not going to lie, it's a good concept, but wager matches aren't as the most pressing matters for actually gambling for online matchmaking instead of testing it, pitting it against a certain type of skill in a variety of different forms, whether it be, uh, whether it be, what's the word now, whether it's fucking, what's the word now, whether it's like online matchmaking or actually going head to head with like I, I don't even know i've lost my train of thought now. i don't even know what the fuck i was gonna say then but you all understand what i mean i shouldn't have to put up with people playing in a play style in a lobby and then me have to rush against them because that's just a waste of time and if already smgs are already at a hindrance then it's fucked up if you understand what i mean but anyway there i finish up the gameplay i go 38 to 6 and peace